I think in a nutshell, what Zhuangzi thinks is that the world is so complicated and it's changing so fast that you can't track it with logical or verbal categories. And you can't track it with ancient ritual guidelines or ancient texts. The only way to actually track the world and respond accurately to it is to make your mind tenuous or empty. So you do this, this famous idea of fasting of the mind, right? You empty your mind in some way. And you're emptying it of preconceptions, of things that you've learned, of your sense of your own importance or how cool you are or smart you are. When you can do that, the world as it really is will reveal itself to you. The heavenly pattern will reveal itself to you. And then you'll be able to move through the world in a skillful way. And so he, in a way, he's rejecting all the various schools around him for the same reason. And I think he would reject the Tao Te Ching Lao Tzu authors as well, because they're saying this is the right way to live. And he doesn't think we know what the right way to live is. That the right way to live is whatever's right in the moment based on your judgment once you've freed yourself from preconceptions and you're you're responding to the world with this this force he calls the spirit that's inside you instead of using your mind so that's the context in which he's he's writing there's this um you know hundreds of hundred schools all debating each other about what the, the best way to live is and he thinks that um thinking that you could figure that out and that then you'd know you'd have like a a hundred percent fail safe way to act is is wrong that we don't know. And it's you see this in the text itself where he's um, he's constantly undermining things he says, right? Are the words that I say any different from the chirpings of birds? He says at one point. I think his his strategy for getting around this problem of language is to just present us the reason there's so many stories in the text is that I think he he's not gonna tell you the right way to live. What he's gonna do is show you people and hope that you will figure out what you need to do to emulate them. He thinks the main flaw of human beings is our tendency to use our mind to make right and wrong distinctions. He describes this as the essence of being human. So his view of human beings is kind of complicated. We have this uh, heavenly spirit inside of us that we can get in touch with if we can down-regulate our mind and allow our spirit to take over. But it's our nature to not do that. It's our nature to want to follow our mind and make our mind ruler. And so one way to look at what he's trying to do is dethrone the mind as the controller of our behavior. He wants us to tap into something that he sees as deeper. Um, and so the problem is we use our mind and the, one of the functions of the mind is to cut up the world into clear categories in his view. That's what the mind's for in a way. And so the, the mind chunks up the world into categories and puts labels on them. And then we're supposed to use those categories to, to navigate our behavior in the world. And he thinks the problem with that is, again, that, that the world is too complex. The world is changing all the time. Uh, but things are constantly transforming into other things. And so categories aren't stable. And so we can't navigate the world using fixed categories. And so what he wants you to do, what he thinks the Taoist sage does is he, the metaphor he uses sometimes is making your mind like a mirror. So you, your mind is just going to reflect what's in front of it and categories and ideas of right and wrong and teachings from the past. These are all things that obscure your mirror that make it, so that your mirror's dirty and it's not actually reflecting what's in front of it. So if you can clear, fast your mind, clear away these, these categories and these concepts, what you'll be left with is this empty or tenuous mirror that can actually really reflect what's in front of it. And it doesn't mean not making, this is something people also sometimes get a little bit wrong about the Zhuangzi, I think, is it's not about not making distinctions at all. Because to live in the world, you have to choose left versus right. You got to choose which way you're going to go. The difference is that if your mind is empty, you see what's really in front of you, 
and then you make the decision based on what's in front of you, not what you think is in front of you. You're actually making it in real response to reality instead of to reality overlaid by all these categories that's obscuring your view of what's in front of you. And so that's his main, his main worry about rigid right and wrong is that it's obscuring our view of the world. Um, and you see this so as, you know, in the social world. So you're not interacting with people the right way because you have certain preconceptions about who they are or what they are based on what they look like. Or, I mean, that's why he, um, I think he celebrates these people who are, uh, you know, have one leg or they're hunchback or they're a leper or they're a butcher. So, I mean, it's, I think it's hard for us to realize how radical it is for him to use a butcher as a spiritual exemplar because butchers were the lowest of the low in Confucian society. Um, it was a kind of almost kind of outcast profession because you were taking life. You, your job was to kill things. And um, so butchers were really kind of viewed with suspicion. Um, and and yet in chapter three of the Zhuangzi, we have this butcher who's a spiritual exemplar and who's showing us how to, who's teaching this Lord how to live his life. So I think that's part of the idea too, is you, you know, you need to suspend your, your stereotypes and your preconceptions about who people are and actually interact with them as they really are. And that's the way to, um, that's the way to move through both the physical and the social world skillfully. So it's, it's the identical problem to moral certainty is thinking that, you know, you know what success is. It's desire based on rigid ideas of what's, success and what's not success so um you decide that having being successful means having this type of job and this type of house and this type of car and the his diagnosis of that problem is it's essentially the same diagnosis he has with regard to moral certainty um, you don't want to be certain that you're right and other people are wrong you also don't want to be attached to a particular model of success especially if it's one that's given to you by your society. So he thinks society gives us these notions of what it means to be successful. And they're often wrong. Um, so um, you don't want to turn yourself into this cage pheasant or the, you know, the famous story about um, Zhuangzi being offered a job and the, the imperial, the, court of a ruler right so that's success being a that's what all these philosophers wanted essentially was to be at a court of a ruler and have this kind of basically tenured track have a tenured job <laughs> at a university um, that was success um, and so someone comes and offers Zhuangzi he's fishing on this river and offers him this job and he says um, I hear there's this great sacred turtle and this this court of this ruler who's kept in a fancy box and he's worshipped and the guy says yeah that's true and he says um, do you think that turtle would rather be there being worshipped and in this fancy box or would he rather be here dragging his tail in the mud on the side of the river and the guy says well he'd probably be, drag be dragging his tail in the mud and so Zhuangzi says well then let me drag my tail in the mud go away but I don't want to be trapped in this thing that is going to kill me and that people think is what I should be aspiring to, but it's not what I aspire to. The Zhuangzi is just stands apart because it is so funny. Um, it seems to be the product of, of this really brilliant and thoughtful individual who, who saw things about the human condition that I think are deeply true. 